Hi, my name is Krzysztof Pachulski and I'm an evangelist for Eastern Europe and Israel at Epic Games. Um, feel free to hit me up at krzysztof.pachulski at epicgames.com uh, with essentially like whatever you need. <laughs> so if you have any questions regarding Epic Games business or, uh, or Unreal Engine in general, uh, whatever, both technical and non-technical uh, questions are, are appreciated and I'm going to be happy to help. If you if you might have any doubts and any issues or anything to talk about in general, um, so just a quick disclaimer: the features are in early access because Unreal Engine Five is in early access, and we don't really recommend using this for production. Uh, you can though check this out already if you want to adapt early. Um, let's quickly talk about what the talk is about. <laughs> so we're gonna talk about modular gameplay features. You might have seen the feature video. Uh, about uh, the modular gameplay features that uh, that we released already on YouTube. And uh, I want to tell you that this is not the same video. <laughs> so uh, this will be a bit more in-depth breakdown of, of the features. But I'm not going to cover everything, uh, all the basics of the system. But I'll just make sure you, you will understand. I mean, like, if you want to get to know more, feel free to check out this talk the feature video and also uh, the live stream that was uh, released just a few months ago uh, sorry a few weeks ago um, on Unreal Engine's YouTube channel so let's quickly take a look at what uh, are oh sorry yeah what uh, uh, what comes here with with Unreal Engine 5 so there are game features and also modular gameplay plugin uh, so game features are something that we will talk a lot uh, in this video about uh, and modular gameplay plugin, plugin adds a game framework component manager and this allows you to add components to actors of selected class that are registered to the system uh, which means that you can inject components from plugins without uh, letting the game know that you want to uh, without the game knowing about the components that you want to add so this allows you to essentially inject anything into your game just using components. Um, yeah, let's quickly take a look at game features. So game features are a special kind of plugin uh, that uh, goes under game features, the special directory. And the game features can be anything, mechanics, enemy types, items, game areas, abilities, whatever you can think of essentially. Uh, but yeah, uh, what makes a game feature and this is uh, so this is not really important to, un uh, to remember, but it's good to know <laughs> uh, because all this is done by default if you create the plugin from the template. But if you don't, uh, you can move your plugin to the plugin slash game features folder and then add a, a create a game feature data uh, asset that is named just the same as your plugin. And let's take a look at this kind of asset. You can see here that there is uh, some uh, some like bigger categories like feature state actions and game feature and so feature state uh, allows you to s uh, decide in which state the action is installed is like the plugin is in the game but the game doesn't i mean like the the system in general doesn't know anything about it uh, registered will register this to the to the game feature system uh, but won't load it loaded will have it loaded in the system but not active and active will perform all the actions and register everything to the asset manager. So uh, let's quickly take a look at the actions. Mm, so there are a few. Uh, add cheats, add components, add data registry and add data registry source. Uh, th we also have the asset manager here. Uh, this allows us to um, to add uh, all this, uh, to add like new primary asset types uh, inside your features. Um, so add data registry and add data registry source actions are very useful for the data driven approach. Um, and this is essentially a global storage for your data, just like data assets uh, or data tables, composite data tables rather, uh, but for any kind of data and a bit easier to access because it's global uh, and you don't have to have the, uh, the access to the specific asset um, any, anymore. So like take a look at the UEFI documentation to check those out. I'm not going to cover this at all. 
Um, add cheats I'm also not gonna cover, but uh, I'm speaking about it in the feature video. You need to create a uCheat Manager extension and then you can add, just directly from the game feature, you can add your cheats to the game uh, so, so you will have the commands registered and ready to use. And then the most important, in my opinion, in this, uh, in this uh, list is add components and it will add a component to all actors of the specified class as long as they opted into the system. Um, and I think, I think this is just as versatile as it can be. Uh, you can't do everything with that but you can do most of the stuff. So if you want to spawn a uh, an actor in your game, if you want to uh, add a, a hat to the player, or maybe you want to change some behavior of of your like other actor, like for example, you want to add uh, some functionality to um, to to your doors for example you need you want to make it able so you want to make the player able to open that you can add uh, components uh, that will take care of those functionalities so the game features are meant to bring new content and functionalities into your game in such a way that the game has no idea about them in other words uh, you don't have to modify your game uh, at all your game your core project your core game project at all to uh, bring in new content and functionalities uh, in fact you can't do it even <laughs> so i mean you you can but you can't reference the the feature the game features from from your core game project um, and that's why uh, you know the, the the features are really encapsulated into those plugins and this helps to maintain your project and also helps you know divide res responsibility it can be useful for prototyping because you can just close and close this whole functionality into this plugin and it will be brought you know uh, into the game by the game feature system without touching the game at all so you can prototype anything without worry of breaking the game essentially um, just a quick note here that like you would probably want to plan more carefully what uh, will become a game feature, what will be a part of the core game. Um, but um, yeah, you, you should be able to pretty s easily like figure that out yourself. Uh, in general, just like, you know, remember that if something really is, uh, if, if your game really relies on something like, for example, the coins, which will be an example in this video, um, you should you should probably put the coins into your core game. I'm showing it as an example because, like you know, it it really visualizes some some things, um, and is easy to reference <laughs> because everyone like knows how coins in games work. Um, but uh, in general, just please remember to 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 plan that out and just you know uh, be careful if n like not to go overboard with with using that. Although. I think it's so flexible system that like most cases should be just fine. Let's quickly go through the steps to create a new game feature and add support for them uh, in your project. So essentially I have this uh, vanilla pro <laughs> project in vanilla Unreal Engine. Um, <clears throat> so this is just a third person blueprint, uh, sorry, first person template. Mm, and uh, to add support for game features, we first need to activate two plugins and it will be modular gameplay and game features so let's enable both of them let's restart the editor and upon restart we should see an error message that the asset manager doesn't have uh, the entry for asset type of um, game feature data so here usually you would go to edit uh, project settings and then let's move this to the side for a while uh, and then asset manager and then you would add your primary asset types here but you don't have to do that because you just need to press this add entry to primary asset type to scan and you can see that here um, now we can close this guy uh, let, let it be um, the primary asset type was added here in the directories slash game slash unused so this essentially is just necessary to put but uh, it's not inside the game uh, so so it's gonna be uh, treated a little bit differently um, okay so now we have that enabled so we can start creating our own okay new plugin game features 
uh, game feature content only and you can see it's content only you can add code though uh, you just need to add the modules manually um, so the uh, you can see that uh, it's already placed under plugins slash game features and we will just call it uh, I don't know mm. so when I created my uh, game feature this uh, IDK so it's it's named just as a feature uh, this IDK data asset uh, of game feature data type uh, appeared and you can now modify the the settings of this it's uh, also placed in the idk uh, sorry in the root content of your plugin so um, now we can start working on it there is a message that tells us to deactivate the feature before editing so we can put it in register state or whatever other state for now because we will be adding new uh, components let's quickly add um, two components uh, that we'll add to the player. One will be just a simple um, static mesh component. Oh, too many presses of the button. Uh, BP weird attachment. And here I'm gonna just put it. Uh, yeah, let's, let's just put everything here. Um, so on begin play, I'm gonna be so I'm gonna be essentially attaching this to the third person character. This is my idea. So uh, I'm gonna get owner. Uh, I'm gonna also cast this to a third person character and get mesh. Uh, and we we'll, we will change the attachment points so the whatever mesh we will um, input here will appear at, uh, at the player's head. So attach to component, attach component to component. Uh, so we want this mesh to be a parent. Um, and here I'm gonna use the head um, socket. Uh, okay, so now let's uh, quickly uh, go to class defaults and like let's take a look and search for something cool to put on player's head. We can put a bush. bush. Fine. Uh, all right. So now let's add one action. Add components. And add a new uh, component list. And here I'm going to use third person. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Third person character. And the component class would be weird attachment. Oh, weird. Uh, can't write, sorry. Uh, fine, all good. We should be able to see it, but no. So just to fix it. Uh, as you probably remember, add components works only for the actors that opted in. I also didn't activate the plugin, so I forgot to do that. Let's try now. But you can see it still doesn't happen. Uh, so let's go quickly to the player character. And we need to register... Um, ourselves to the system. Uh, so let's add begin play and on begin play. You could actually do it like whenever you want, but uh, let's um, get get framework component manager. And here now I want to use the add receiver method. Okay. And you can see the receiver is self. So yeah, now we have a bush here. So we should probably uh, rotate <laughs> the bush a little bit, but it's also cool, uh, cool looking thing. <coughs> uh, this is this, this is how we how you can create uh, create a feature. And now let's let's go to the example. So uh, I've created this example for the feature video, but I'm gonna just do a bit deeper dive into some of the things. Uh, I'm gonna also skip a little bit of, of what I've covered in the video already, but I'll make sure again that, that you will understand everything. First, uh, a huge shout out to those creators and to Alan Noon and uh, Aaron Langmead for helping me out. So there is one thing that I'm not gonna cover. There is a quest system. There is a little bit more about it in the future video, but it was just made for uh, demonstration purposes rather than um, rather than for educational ones. So I'm gonna just skip it. Let's then go to the gameplay.
uh, and uh, I'm not gonna uh, show it just as I did in the video. I'm gonna just go through features one by one. Uh, let's uh, just quickly go and see how the first one was done. So the first one is Magic Hut and the Magic Hut is um, just as simple as the feature that we've just created. So let's go to the Magic Hut, ignore the quest call component and uh, just let's see. We have a Magic Hut a skeletal mesh here, the material and the spawn particle effect. And all this is set up just by the hut component that is added to the player's head. Uh, actually to the player's actor and, and it's placed into the uh, on its head here in the attachment. So the, uh, the hut attaches itself in the right place um, and then the particle effect is played and there are some delays and hard-coded values. Uh, don't really do it that way, I should have done it way nicer but uh, this is just to show the idea not show the best practices all of all, all around um, and over time I blend in the mesh uh, meshes material and the parameter called opacity right so the regular stuff that you would just do normally in uh, in any other like if you were making it just in your game but the only difference is this is how you add this to your game and you don't just go to the character uh, to the character's blueprint, and you don't uh, you don't necessarily have to add this like modify your game to add the add the hut. So this is a whole difference. Not much to be honest. Not not a huge difference, but a great tool because now I have my hut here, and I can actually go start playing the game. Sorry, and then content drawer magic hut. Let's have it here. You can see that now the, the, the feature is registered, but if I put it to the active, it just happens instantly, right? So we can even eject, oh sorry. And we can, yeah, unregister it or register again. So so this is very cool. Uh, let's, let's quickly activate another one. Let's go to the magic missile first. So when I activate this, nothing really happens, but now, when uh when I press my left mouse button, I can sorry I, my my gameplay uh, recordings may be a bit uh, messy. So uh, yeah, the bo the boxes are are sleeping. The physics is sleeping because I set it that way. Uh, so just don't pay much attention to that as well. Anyhow, uh, by the way, uh, the, the the dynamic grass is the one that I used uh, that I made for the for the uh, dynamic grass talk at Digital Dragons Academy. So so you know, remember to to also uh, take part in that one. So we can now shoot those uh, magic uh, darts, and I go I'm gonna show you quickly how it's done. Uh, there is a ability component, and it's uh, my class in C++ that I, uh, that I wrote in C++. So let's go to the ability component base and this class only uh, adds those events and we can now implement them in the um, in the blueprints. Uh, it also takes care of the input and of the input mapping of those events. So we supply it with the input action and then this input action is on register. So when we register to the player, this input action will be used to bind the uh, the events to this specific input action. I'm using enhanced input here. So uh, yeah, to use enhanced input, uh, you just need to uh, activate enhanced input in plugins. So we have the enhanced input here. And also what do you, what do you have to do is you need to go to the project settings and go check out the input. You, you can see that I don't have any mappings here, but my game plays very well because I have the enhanced player input here and enhanced input component also selected here instead of my default player input and input component. And now I can use the uh, the actions. If I would create an actor instead of a component, I could just write, uh, I'm not sure, was it fire or attack? Yeah, attack. I can create this event and it's a bit better and nicer than the general input events. Uh, I'm uh, covering this a bit more in the feature video, so I'm gonna skip it. Uh, although this class just, what it does is just those mappings. Now I can override those in the component and just use them as the entry. So this means that essentially like if I'll use these uh, ability tick on cancelled on completed on started and uh, event activate ability, uh, if I'll use those, 
I'm essentially interacting directly with the input. So because they are called directly from from the input. Here you can also see that I'm playing a montage. Uh, so this montage is uh, it's here also under my uh, magic missile content, and this is essentially an animation that will play in a slot. So this is an upper upper body slot. You can see that in my player animations, player and in blueprint. I have created full body and upper body slots, so we can now uh, play uh, animation just in this part of the mesh that is defined by the upper body slot, which is super useful for for things like you know animating just uh, upper half of the body uh, with the attack animation and the lower half just stays animated with our movement uh, input. Okay, let's take a quick look at at some other aspects of this of this feature so magic missile again and you can see that we have particles here uh, we also have sounds and we have this input right so this input is being mapped uh, so there is a an input action that we can later assign to uh, our inputs to and then we assign a button to this action and here in the magic missile ability i register this mapping context in here and also, if you go to the class defaults, I put input input action here. I could have probably like done this also in C++, but I just like didn't bother at that point. I could have done it instead of like adding all those things uh, there. And oh, get on in character is just my uh, function from C++ as well. Just simple as that. You should probably have some kind of assert here or check if this on in character is cool because I'm never checking that or at least, you know, just handle it somehow. But yeah. So that's how you add input <laughs> to your to your features. This is not the only way. Uh, this is just one of them. Uh, I just decided to go this uh, to go with this. But yeah. So the projectile is just a regular projectile. Nothing different from what you would normally do in your game. Okay. Uh, let's then go to uh, the next feature. And the next feature is coins. Uh, but uh, we will take a look at the teleport because this is just another ability. And I'm gonna just cover this uh, because we are really fresh with those abilities. Uh, you can see that I implement here uh, the, the, the same events on started, ability tick, uh, activate ability, on cancelled, on completed. And uh, that's it, I believe. Then I also remove some things that I spawned with uh, this uh, feature in here. Uh, and uh, this is because uh, my add component action will just take care of this teleport ability component being added and removed. But then you would need to pay attention to all the things that you spawn out from outside of the actions. Usually you won't deactivate the features during runtime, so you don't really have to pay attention to it at all. But if you want to activate and deactivate them at runtime, then yeah, you would be better paying attention to um, to uh, to all the things that you that you instantiate. So the teleport ability component is added to the player character here, and this was this works just the same as uh, as the magic uh, missile. We have the input here, and the input is mapped to right mouse button. But also the difference here, there is a mod a trigger that is called hold and release. So in this case. Uh, I will get more info about this event from uh, about this input from the events in my ability. So, if I'll hold it and keep holding, I will get the ability tick. Uh, where is the teleport uh, here? I'll get the ability tick event uh, being fired. And to show you how it's done, it's basically because uh, this is an ongoing state of the input being mapped to something I called ability tick simply. So, and this ability tick uh, is just defined here. Let's quickly go back to the to the teleport ability and just uh, I'm gonna just show you how it looks like. So I have those buttons that uh, allow me to enable new features and disable them. Uh, one adds the hat, two adds the coins that we'll talk about uh, in a moment, but I'm gonna remove it for now. Seven and eight g adds me the, uh, adds the abilities. This is one ability. And this is the, okay, yeah, uh, the tree. And this is the other, right? I can aim, right click, hold it. And when I release, we, we teleport, right? So now let's take a look at coins. Uh, so I've added um, coins, which uh, coins uh, feature, which adds a new ele UI element. And uh, the UI element is being spawned by something called the coin pouch. There are two more components being added. One is a coin spawner to the boxes and also a coin magnet 
to the player so we can just track, uh, just attract the coins. Let's go to the coins feature and take a look, quick look at this. So the coins add those three, actually four, but this is just a, uh, sorry. This is just the quest goal. Uh, so we add the coin magnet to the player, uh, coin pouch to the player and the coin spawner to the box. So the coin spawner essentially just on begin play, it adds a, uh, it binds event to dispatcher and if it's destroyed I've created a custom damageable component to handle that when it's destroyed we spawn from two to nine coins that's it so the coin magnet adds on event tick uh, something like sphere overlap actors that checks for the uh, coins around so you would probably in most cases just uh, add the I just create this as not a, an actor component, but rather you would just parent this from uh, the trigger as a base class instead and just cover that uh, I without using the tick event, uh, which may be heavy at some times, like not necessarily in this case much, but yeah, if you would add more of those components to the world, then maybe. And the coin pouch, which is our core of the system, and it collects the, co uh, it uh, counts the coins. And it also spawns the coin pouch widget and it takes care of the updating the, the coins display. And this is all done in the coin pouch. So we call update coins display here. We just play the animation so, uh, so that we will get uh, this kind of tiny little boom. Uh, sorry, that was the sound of this animation in my opinion. <laughs> and uh, where's the coin pouch? Uh, and that's it. Fine, there are two important things left uh, and it's, uh, okay, three important things left. Items first, uh, items also uh, include an inventory uh, component which takes care of the items collection and all this, all this uh, necessary stuff. But we also, um, so this is the only one added here, but we also have uh, the asset manager primary type. Uh, and this is just a type of item and all the items that are uh, of the item, uh, sorry, all the, all the assets that are of the item type, which is just this simple class with simply data and nothing else, will be taken into account uh, by the asset manager because it's your primary data asset. So let's quickly take a look at how it's done. Uh, the items can have effects and effects are done just like this. So they're bl blueprintable, blueprint type, edit inline new, and they have the height categories, uh, item effect internal. So I can just uh, hide parts of the script from, from the uh, details panel in the edit inline new view. So then later in my item class, I set this to be instanced. So every time I'll select the, the class here, it will create an instance of this class and, and let me uh, modify it. So let's go to the... Uh, sorry, not this one, to the items and healing elixir, for example. It has the healing period, uh, uh, healing and period. So every, uh, every 0.5 second, it will heal me 5 HP. There is also display name, description, base name and icon. So here, uh, items, uh, let's, let's just quickly show you uh, how they work. And then let's uh, add a shop to the game. So, so you can see we have a healing potion and it very slowly does uh, heal me like five every 0.5 second it gives me five HP um, let's collect some coins and now I'm gonna yeah let's I'm gonna cheat press C to add thousand coins I'm gonna just press four to spawn the, the shop The shop also introduces some uh, also introduces some uh, new features. Uh, so it first of all relies on both coins and um, and items. So I'm gonna buy a lot of those. One of this, one of this. Uh, this is just you know extra jumps. Uh, so the the puff ball. Boom 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 boom. Uh, so the coin added this area on the map with, with a shopkeeper, 
with an actor inside. Um, and also this uh, kind of uh, shop menu, right? So let's go to the to the shop uh, content and you can see here we just add yeah, this, this guy, we don't need this, but uh, we are just adding a level instance and this kind of action I just took it from the Valley of the Ancients and you can also do it just check the feature video for more information uh, if you need it but you can just copy the classes and, and compile and it just works I also added the item um, the primary date uh, asset data here the shop here in the edit plugin it relies on both coins and items and that way I can reference those from this plugin the, the only caveat is now I am responsible for all that myself so uh, when I activate it uh, the shop player is added to the game so let's open the shop player and see how it looks like you can see we have sequence here yeah you, we can't see much so let's just here uh, go to the levels and enable the main main level view uh, and here bang bang we have the animation that is being spawned when the level is loaded so here on begin play this is just my some extra pre extra precautions like uh, precautions uh, you just need to play uh, the shop spawn okay we have covered how to spawn new worlds and uh, and like you know show them in a nice way with a sequence let's quickly go to the ui and take a look at shop ui and here in the graph you can see that this is how i'm getting the things uh, so uh, i'm getting those uh, those uh, assets from the asset manager okay so the shop is covered so we have just one thing left i believe let's enable enemies uh, of course i'm gonna enable items and uh, my abilities first i don't need the hat so now i'm gonna add oh yeah i pressed the wrong button uh again <laughs> too many buttons to press and if you press the wrong one uh enemies now i can fight with them they shoot at me they have their own ai so yeah just like that okay so let's take a look at those uh, enemies they add uh, the quest goal which is not really important so the comp add components just adds the quest goal and uh, so essentially to add those enemies you don't have to do that uh, i've added uh, just one more thing yeah i believe like if you hold shift and click uh, just my shift doesn't work all uh, all of the time so i spilled some water on it a while ago so yeah it's broken um you can uh, select uh, you can you can add a level instance with your enemies so let's take a look at the enemies layer and here also i don't have uh, my map loaded but to to populate this i went to to the maps sorry not npc to the maps edit main night here made sure it's uh, loaded as blueprint so it has this dot here and also locked it just not to modify it and now I can uh, now I can place my AIs in the world just simple as that you know uh, so at this point let's just take a look at what this uh, consists of uh, so the the, the pawn uh, the an, an enemy pawn it has all its animation uh, set up and, and all the AI actually it's using a lot of animations from the core game from the player because this is just the same skeleton so I don't didn't have to add new animations here but I have like idle walk run no weapon edit uh, just so because this guy doesn't have a weapon so I just created a variation of that here we have an AI and our player car uh, sorry our uh, enemy um, our BP enemy uh, here in the class defaults it has the enemy AI uh, BP enemy AI set as the AI controller so this guy runs the behavior tree and the behavior tree is here and now you know like we just attack or we patrol and this is just this that's just as simple as that you just add this content here in the in the plugin instead of adding this stuff into your game and then whenever you would like to remove this or change this off you would need to i don't know modify your level to remove all the enemies from it or remove your layer from your main level here you can just enable or disable this feature and it 
is all being done by default. So there is a some more assets like bomb and audio, but you know, this is just the quite generic stuff and super easy to figure out yourselves because you just build it as you would build any other feature. And that's it for the example. Let's continue. Let's quickly take a look at some other things that I want to cover and and let's continue. Um, so you can create custom game features. You can essentially do anything with components and with adding components or with spawning levels or doing this kinds of stuff. But sometimes, actually spawning levels is, a, is an example of a custom game feature action. So sometimes you need to do something else that was not done by the engine, uh, that is not done by the engine for you automatically. Uh, so you need to, for example, spawn something or maybe register an input mapping context. Mm, to do that, you can create new actions. And instead of doing that in component blueprints, you could just, uh, you could just use uh, those actions uh, to inform your game about new content coming in. So if you create your, if you'll create your own system that, for example, adds a new element that is very specific to your game, like a new weapon to the game, you can, for example, create an action, add weapon, or maybe add skin. Usually this stuff will be covered by the asset manager though. So, you know, this is the, this is the easiest, but spawning levels, for example, is a little, a little bit harder. Maybe you want to add a new UI element uh, just by uh, using the, the feature action. You can also, you could also create an action like that. It's a little bit of work at first, but then you will get a tool that, um, that will be really helpful to you. <clears throat> so um, you can, yeah, I've, r I've written here that you can use it for informing the game systems about new content, granting new abilities on I or items to the player. For example, you could be adding abilities to the ability system uh, component, uh, to the ability component of the player character uh, through this uh, through through a new action. So each player would get the ability, or just the ones that I don't know do something. You can register new, new input mappings or you could like load a level layer, right? So this is um, this is something that we need to now take from the value of the ancients. There is a new better um, solution in, uh, in works that will use data layers, but uh, this is also another topic and probably will be um, the, the, the new feature action of, uh, for adding parts of the level to the game will be probably added later. They're working on it right now. Uh, so essentially creating custom game feature is more elegant than using add component sometimes, mm, depending on the situation. But if you want to create one, you can uh, derive from new game feature action. And I really encourage you to check how the default ones were built and the ones from the Valley of the Ancients as well. Um, Spawning actors is interesting because you could, for example, spawn the actors from components. You could just create a uh, generic spawner that uh, will have some, I don't know, tags and you will have a lot of them in the world. And then you will, uh, for example, say that this enemy spawns uh, in the generic spawn uh, with a tag of, uh, I don't know, hardcore enemies or whatever, or like boss fights zero to a you know you can name them as you as you wish but like i mean you could just create uh you could just uh, spawn them by adding a component to to these guys but you can also create a custom action that would spawn them uh if you would um uh, if you would like to uh to have a bit more control like with the tags because like if you would add just add a component it will be added to all of the all of the actors um and you can also select the location randomly, of course. Uh, so just, I don't know, add a, um, use any way of, like, for example, add a component to an actor that is already on the scene as, and is only one. I don't know, game mode looks nice in case uh, the in case you're making a single player game or like your server is the one that should be um, responsible for, for spawning uh, enemies, which is quite, quite all right. I'm not sure if, you should be adding components to the game mode uh, as systems, but uh, I think it's also a cool idea um, and used it sometimes. So, you know, 
use use caution but you know, if you want to do that just yeah try it out and see what happens uh, if your game is uh, like very strong on the spawners you, you you would probably create a custom action so yeah let's go through some tips and first of all we I would like to really and uh, really uh, stress that you should pay attention to how you encapsulate things in the plugins you should not uh, probably um, you should not reference anything from the from inside the core game so that's why if you are creating something like coins or the items or you know the very general kind of core mechanic of your game or system just do it in a core game uh, but if this is something like a new ability just feel free to do that mm, to do that as a feature uh, I mean you need to figure out yourself all depends on your game's architecture and how you want to uh, be building your game but yeah uh, just please don't try to <laughs> don't try to go uh, overboard with that uh, probably not every single feature should be a game feature. Uh, to activate game features in runtime, you can take a screenshot of this and like try to rewrite it uh, in your game. Just remember that the uhelper functions library is my class's name, so <laughs> just replace it. Uh, yeah, and uh, and this is uh, this is just a I, I think a, a function to to toggle. Uh, the the game feature being active or not. Um, there is a thing called asset referencing policy and you can change the um, asset validation so that you could for example save the assets that reference game features. Uh, in this way you would for example be able to um, to exclude some of the rules or include new rules uh, Take a look at those. Uh, try to figure it out. It's not. Uh, it's not really useful, and it's dangerous in most cases. But in some, it may be super useful. So, if you don't need it, don't use it. But if you do, just use it with caution, because this is, you know, you're just enabling yourself to do things that may be bad. Um, game features project policies can be used to determine if the feature should be activated in the project and uh, this is an example of, of, of this of this kind of class that I created for one of the projects in the past and this checks for the required test project version uh, field in the, mm, the plugin file uh, essentially you can here uh, set you can set this in the game slash game features slash you know, default classes slash game feature manager class. Uh, so you can put your project policies here. You can also disable some plugins, like force disable them, or you can add additional metadata keys. And here there should be one entry, which is uh, required test project version. Just the example is from the different projects. So uh, then the screenshot. Uh, don't forget to check out the live stream because it was great. And also don't forget to check my feature video because I hope it's also useful. Um, and uh, I go through a bit different pacing and different things uh, in this video, so, so just feel free to check this out. It's a bit uh, less detailed in some places. So thank you for watching. I hope it was useful and it extends a little bit uh, the topic from the feature video. Uh, feel free to reach me out uh, at my uh, email address. Uh, I if you f of course follow me on Twitter although I'm not really responding to messages on Twitter so if you would send me one just you know try again or, or, or write me an email it will be easier for all of us um, yeah and thank you thank you thank you for watching and feel free to uh, to 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 reach out ask any questions and let me know if, if you like the talk and if you want more like in-depth dives into things i uh, really wish i had like two hours for that so i could really really break this down but i had to rush a little bit some things so uh if you have any more questions or if you would like to talk about very specific things from this talk i'm super happy to happy to uh to have a call with you later so uh just feel free to to let me know okay thank you very much
and uh, happy conference. Bye.